we're here to introduce you to what I consider one of my favorite travel games is cribbage. Avocado. Games. This is Michael Smadjo and Christopher Grabowski. I've been playing cribbage for over 40 years and I have yet to be bored with the game. There's so many nuances and as people become experienced with the game, the game has so many different ways of playing out. We do not cut the cards in cribbage because it's a gentleman's game. It's presumed to be a gentleman. This looks like a gentleman over here. So I don't hand him the cards after I shuffle because he knows I'm not going to cheat him. That's a lovely thing to think. So anyway, if I do hand him the cards and he takes it, then it's his deal. And I forfeited my deal, which is important to sneaky players like myself. So, what is the heart of the game? Well, the game starts off where you're going to get five to six cards. In the two-player game, it's six, so we'll only talk about two players right now. Um, you get six cards. Now, of those six, you have to look at them, and you have to decide what you choose to keep. You're going to have to remove two cards from your hand. If you're the dealer, you get to keep them and put them in a secondary hand called the crit. And that will be used only for counting points at the end of the play. So what will happen is, let's look at this. I've got, boy, I'm cheating. Look at this. I've got a bunch of nines, and I got a ten, and a I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what to do with this one of the tree. <laughs> because uh, there's so many points here, it's really a bad example for a first hand. So anyway, I'll discard these two cards, and let's say Chris gives me two cards. Then at the end, I use these cards to count points, which look very promising because it's two sixes and a five. So anyway, that's how the deal starts, and after the crib has been established, then Chris being the person who's not a dealing this time, we'll split the deck in half. And then um, he will put th this part back on top. He's never played, so he doesn't know. And then that card gets put on top, and that will be considered your fifth card in both the crib and your hand for counting points. Now, what are points? Well, as you can see, the first part of each round is about establishing what you choose to have as a hand. And that's exciting. Um, the second part is that we will end up playing cards. And what we do is we'll play them in sequence. So um, the if Chris is dealt... Let's give Chris a hand so this way he can actually participate in this. And let's just ignore any common sense here. And then I'm just going to ask Chris to just randomly play any old card. It doesn't matter. Just play a card. Okay. So he has a five. So he would say five. And then I would add, let's say, a nine to it. And then I say 14. So we keep a running total. Go ahead, Chris. Keep coming. Play another card and add to the total. So 14 plus seven is 21. I play 20. Now you cannot go past 31. Do you have an ace? No. Okay, so Chris can't play. So it goes to me. I can't play because none of my cards will allow me to stay uh, to make either 31 or uh, stay under 31. So that would mean I would get a point. Let's say I'm red. I would get a point for um, last card because I was the last card to play. That's how the hands go. They keep going until we use up, utilize our cards. And there's a lot going on in this. So I'm just glossing over the main part. And then it's time to count points. Now, I have a crib. So the person who doesn't have a crib would count his points. So then he would look at his hand, and he would say, Chris is so naturally lucky, it's ridiculous. So he's got three cards in a row. Okay, the suit doesn't matter. So right there, that is three points just for having that run. And surprisingly, in this game, we consider the number 15 important. So the 7 and the 8 together is a 15. The five in this particular case is useless. You can't do anything with it. Face cards are worth ten. Aces are only worth one. And there's no wraparound when it comes to a run. So king does not go to ace. Now there's a lot of different ways of making points. And that's what you're going to really be looking at. As well as playability. When you dump your two cards, you want to have the most amount of points. So in my hand, I have three nines which is worth six points. A pair is worth two, three of a kind is worth six, and four of a kind is worth 12. A nice thing to have. So if I had gotten a 10 or a seven in this cut, 
I would have runs like crazy, and I'm glad I didn't do that because the math would have been crazy. So, how do you make points? You make points by getting pairs in your hand, by having pairs in your hand. And remember, this is your fifth card. You're three of a kind or four of a kind. You get points by having a run. You get points by combinations of 15, no matter how many cards it takes. If you've got all five cards and it makes 15, it's got it. If you're lucky enough to have two cards that make 15, you got it. So, what else? Uh, let's see. Pair, da, 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 da. A flush. If your entire hand is all of the same suit, you get four points. If the cut card matches that suit, it's five. Okay? So, let's see. There's some, there's some other oddball things, such as if I happen to have the jack that matches the cut card, I get a point. It's called knobs. Yes, knobs. You can make all the little jokes you want. Now, if this card is cut and it's the jack, it's one of the four jacks, then the dealer receives knobs for two points because he's special. So that's knobs. Knobs in the hand, one point. Knobs cut is two points. Let's see, what else? I know I'm missing something. Oh, when you're making a run, and let's steal a card from here. When you're making a run, as many combinations of runs that you can make are worth points. So, this is worth three. Okay, for the run. But I have another eight. So I remove that eight, and there's another three for six. And since there's a pair as well, that makes it eight. And since there's two 15s, 7 and 8, 7 and 8, that's another 4 points added. This is shorthand. If you have a 3 card run with a card that is also a pair, then you have a 3 card run twice. And the sum total is 8. Okay? So you can say 3 card run twice for 8, and now you're done. Okay? It doesn't include the 15. Now some people count the 15s first. 15, 2, 15, 4, 3 card run for 12. Remember, we're always adding to the last number. That's one of your responsibilities. If we had a setup where this card was cut, then we'd have four three card runs, which I'll have to start counting separately. There's probably a shorthand for it that I don't remember. So that would be three plus three plus three is 12, plus you've got two separate pairs, four 16, and then you've got two 15s for 20 points. That's huge, okay? I believe the largest hand that you can have, point-wise, is 30 points. Since the game plays to 121, that's a big bite. At any time when you reach 121, the game is over. Every 30 points that you make is significant. If at the end, Chris wins, he gets to the 121 point. He makes his point. Depending upon how many groups of 30 are behind, is going to determine the level of success or failure. So, if he's within the last 30, then it's just a loss. If he's on the other side of that 30, then he is skunked. If he's between, I believe, 60 and 31, that makes a double skunk, and of course, earlier than that, makes a triple skunk. And for those who like to bet, those become very significant. The way the board works is that you have two pegs. So you have a peg over here that's supposed to represent your present point position, and then you have the peg in the rear, which is your past. This is a way of making sure that you properly pointed your last peg. So the way they do is they jump over each other, and if it's one point, they only go one. If it's ten points, then it goes even further. Many boards have these sections of spaces broken down in fives, so it's easier to count. Surprisingly, even though the pegboard seems ridiculous, it actually adds excitement to the game because it is like a little horse race. Can this game be played with multiple players other than two? Yes, they can. This game can be played with three players, and in that case, since people have dealt five, each person puts one in the crib, and a, a card from the deck is added to make the fourth crib card. And then, of course, four players, which, again, uses the five. But you don't have to deal from the deck because there's four people throwing in. Now, you can also play this as a team with four players. All these different ways of playing cribbage are worth playing. They're all fun. They all have their way of doing things. Now, another thing that you're going to notice is I brought more than one type of deck of cards. 
Okay, because I want to add one other thing here. I was thinking, okay, I have to bring not just a cribbage board, but I also have to bring a deck of cards. This is which one? I have so many different types. I'm not even a collector, just have them. So you got these minis. For those people out there that are counting every ounce, these are worth uh, quite an investment. They're small enough to to say, okay, they're not that big, and at the same time, uh, they can stow away easily. They almost fit in this board when it gets folded up. So that's cool. For those people, just a standard deck is fine. There are bizarre decks, like this one is called Dead Hand, which is from Chaos Poker. Let's see, what is this? Smirky? I can't read that. Can you read the name of the company? Smirk and Dagger. Smirk and Dagger. Okay. The thing is, is that this is a poker game where the cards have special abilities that affect the poker play, that are just fun. But it's also a standard deck. So there are custom games out there that produce specialized decks, you know, that you can use them as well. So this is like, um, this is double duty because not only getting a standard deck, but you're also getting this crazy poker game if you like it, etc. So the deck that I have been uh, shuffling is a special deck, and that is plastic playing cards. Now, these are, the, I don't know if these guys are in business anymore because when you reach my age, you end up with stuff from God knows when. So, this is 100% plastic playing cards. Now, Chris, how do they feel? I wouldn't even know it if you didn't mention it. Right, there you go. They're 100% plastic. They can't be ruined by bad weather. Why would I take it backpacking? That's why. So, anyway, um, so there you go. So, um, would you like to play? Yeah, let's. There is another rule I forgot to mention that is used by advanced players, and that's called muggins. And muggins is when you see points in another person's hand, they don't peg, they don't declare. And you say, ah, you missed two points there, and you end up getting those points. Now, I like to offer new players the muggins. So if you see any points that I miss, you get them. And that's only fair. And as Christopher advances, then, of course, the muggins will go away. When you're trying to figure out who's winning, the best time to do it is after everybody's had an equal number of cribs. I started with a crib, Chris has a crib, and now that we have even cribs, Chris is ahead. And that's how you read it. Because there will be moments in most games where the lead will fluctuate, but it won't be a fair read unless it's equal cribs. So, that's cribbage. Um, and the thing is, is that, uh, congratulations, you didn't get skunked. That's not the easiest thing in the world. So, overall, what do you think, Chris? That's an interesting game. It was actually kind of fun for, I guess, like an older for classic game. Right, right, right. And what's beautiful about this is it's it's easy to acquire a cribbage board. I get many of my cribbage boards in garage sales and resale stores. I've gotten awesome stuff. There's crazy cribbage boards out there. And a lot of them, the ones that I prefer are the ones that are just one track. It's just easier. But yeah, that would be easier. Exactly. But remember, this is for, for packing, and it's even hollow. And the other colors for... Yes. Um, I don't know why those are there. Um, I, I guess what happened was is I got the pegs from someplace else. But if you take the deck out of there, I believe this will, like, close. But there, I have had cribbage boards that actually the deck goes in there like that. And there are also other cribbage boards that are large enough that actually have decks inside of them. Cribbage is a great little game. It's stood the test of time. If you need a theme, here you go. One player is the Dark Lord and the other person is the Lord of Light. And they're acquiring spells and their values affect their power, such as Spell of Fifteen or The Straight Flush. Or, of course, the run. All of these powerful spells lead up to an awesome end where they become the Lord of the 121. So if you need a theme in order to go ahead and make cribbage your awesomeness, just talk about magic or dungeons or whatever, World War II, whatever it takes to make you happy. But play the game. There's probably... Uh, I used to play online... Uh, against a uh, computer-driven game, and it's a lot of fun. 
So there's that. And if you um, are familiar with Tabletopia, I'm pretty sure they have a copy of um, Cribbage there where you can meet somebody, etc. Cribbage. Two-player, three-player, four-player, four-player teams. Compliments of Ala and Carl Games on the trail. Thank you, Chris. You played a great game. Can we play again? Sure. Okay, but not today because we have a lot of work to do, as you guys know. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Wow.